we apply the idea of electrostatic potential in a lot of situations. Let's just consider this one. We have an 8 times 10 to the negative 8th Coulomb charge. That's our charge, Q. And we're going to calculate the potential at point A, and then later we'll calculate the potential at another point B. Let's just concentrate on the point A here. Okay? A lies 120 centimeters from this 8 times 10 to the negative 8th Coulomb charge. How much work does it take per unit charge to bring some charge, some unspecified charge, in from infinite distance and slide it on into the point A? It doesn't really matter, incidentally, what path we use to bring the charge in. The network that we're going to have to do to bring the charge in to the point A uh, is going to be the same. Uh, in multivariate calculus, you learn that uh, the electric field of a charge like this has the property that it's conservative, which means that when you move a charge around in the field uh, created by this charge, uh, the total work that you have to do depends only on where you start and where you end. I'm just simply going to assert that at the level of this course so that all that matters when we bring a charge in from infinity to point A is how far point A is away from the charge that's giving rise to the field. Now, point A is 120 centimeters, as we said, from this charge. This means that the voltage at A, or the potential at A, uh, is going to be KQ over R. Here's K, here's Q, here's R. Okay, the potential at A is KQ over RA. Actually, let's use RA for the distance here so that we can distinguish it from RB that we'll use over here. Substituting for KQ and RA, we get the voltage, which comes out to be 600 joules per coulomb. The units are fairly simple here. Uh, the coulomb cancels one of the coulombs. The meter cancels one of the meters. So we have newton meters over coulombs. A newton meter is a joule, so we have joules over coulombs. And a joule per coulomb is a volt. So that the potential at this point is 600 volts. If we move into point B, we can do the same thing. All we have to do is calculate KQ over RB, where Q is the charge into whose vicinity we're bringing this unspecified charge. So that um, substituting Q equals 8 times 10 to the negative 8th coulombs. RB equals 80 centimeters, or 0.8 meters. And the value of K, uh, we get a very straightforward calculation that tells us that the potential at B is 900 volts. So to bring a charge in from infinity to A requires 600 volts. Uh, that wasn't really an accurate statement. Uh, uh, the work is actually 600 volts times the number of coulombs. 600 joules per coulomb is what it takes to bring charge into A. We would then multiply that by the number of coulombs of charge that we're bringing to A to get the work. In any case, take 600 joules per coulomb to get to A from infinity, 900 joules per coulomb to get to B from infinity. How much does it take to get from A to B? Well, if we start at infinity and come to A, it takes 600. If we then move to B, we'll have required 900. So the difference between A and B is 300 joules per coulomb, or 300 volts. And of course, that will be what we call the potential difference between A and B.